both of you are pros and I see that your um, microphones are muted. So thank you for muting your microphones. If you have questions, if you would put them into the chat box and at the end of the presentation, I'll answer those questions. So just as you think of them, you're welcome to put them into the chat box. And we usually have about uh, 10 minutes at the end of the presentation and I can answer questions. Okay, so let's get started. Our director is John Binnert, and there's a um, quick uh, message from him in the next slide. Our assistant director is Ray Wong. Um, I am the director of student family and teacher support. My name is Carissa Petrie. Um, I'm the person that's been emailing you about the Jumpstart activities. Um, our director of athletics, student safety and security is Chris Regali. Our director of special education is Andrea Lopez. Our registrar is Ms. Geertz. Um, our school counselor is Nancy Stafford. Our college counselor is Jennifer Dreyfus. And even if you're an eighth or a ninth grader, if you are interested in talking um, to our counselor about college, you should make an appointment with her. She's really good and she can give you some information about um, what, to, what to do to prepare to go to the college that you want to go to. Our health office staff is um, nurse Jennifer Dennison and uh, health assistant Mary Kay Havda. And our front desk staff, and we have the best front desk staff. They're very helpful and they're very kind. Um, we have Rebecca Martinez, she's our attendance clerk. And we have Julie Green, and she's the, um, also the assistant to the registrar. Okay, and this is our um, director, John Binner, and he has a quick welcome for you. Hello, welcome to the PAC. My name is John Binner. I'm the executive director here at Cottonwood Classical Preparatory School, and I also have the distinct honor of being one of the founding teachers. We're so honored to have you joining us, in particular at a time like this where so much uncertainty lies behind and ahead of us. I assure you our teachers and our staff are up to the challenges and they're working very, very hard to have this year feel as normal and productive as it possibly can. You're in good hands this week as you get underway with your school year. Uh, I'll be around at a couple of the parent Q&A sessions to, to try to respond more directly to some of your questions. I look forward to getting to know you again. Welcome. That's Mr. Binner, and he will um, be at tonight's um, parent Q&A. And so he'll be answering um, questions that the parents might not be able to answer. Um, and at today's Q&A um, after the session, um, our IB coordinator, Megan Lowe, will also be there to answer questions. Okay, so let's talk about expectations. So Cottonwood uh, staff always put our students first. Um, we try to be mission strong with our communication, so we need to focus it on our IB mission and our Paideia mission, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. And we need to practice growth mindset. So growth mindset, as I'm sure everybody at this time in history, um, we're all practice practicing growth mindset. We're all trying to learn new technologies and learn to interact at work and at home in different ways. Our Cottonwood students, um, we want them to practice the IB learner profile traits, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, we want them to practice strong communication, and we practice strong communication in our classes, and we want them to have a growth mindset because our students are learning a lot all the time about how to adapt to um, this COVID situation and just they're learning to grow up and be the best people they can be. Our parents, we want you to practice strong communication. Let us know if we need to know something um, and we'll communicate back with you. Um, support your students, support your um, child's teacher. And um, you're in a partnership with the staff to help your student be the best student they can be. 
So at Cottonwood, we um, use the IB learner profile traits as a way to describe how we want students to, to interact with the world. And so our first IB trait is inquirers. And inquirers are curious about the world. They question things. They want to know why. Um, we want students to be knowledgeable. Knowledgeable people learn information. Sometimes they memorize information that they need to recall quickly. We want our students to be thinkers. We want them to mull over ideas and we want them to make meaning of different um, ideas. We want our student to be, students to be communicators. So we want students to be able to interact with each other and the adults around them in a clear way that expresses what they want people to know. We want our students to be principled. We want them to do the right thing even when nobody is looking. We want our students to be open-minded. We have a lot of different types of students with different ideas at our school and we want them to be open to the possibility that something that somebody else thinks that you might not agree with might also be correct. We want our students to be caring. We want them to be kind to each other in their communication. We want our students to be risk takers. We want them to try new things, even when those new things are scary or feel um, like they might not do well at them. We want our students to be balanced. They're gonna be in a heavy duty academic program at Cottonwood Classical. So what other things can they do to balance that academic work? And we want our students to be reflective. We want them to think about what they have done and what they have learned and maybe what they did well and maybe what they wanna improve upon. And your students and students that I'm talking to, you will hear about the IB learner profile traits frequently um, during your time at Cottonwood. All of your teachers will refer to them at some point. The International Baccalaureate Program, or as we refer to it as the IB program, is considered to be the most rigorous um, college preparatory program in the world. Um, we think that it encompasses um, more of uh, good academics than any other program that we know of. And we'll talk in more detail about the IB program because high school students starting in 11th grade um, become IB, uh, they start taking the IB proper classes. So in all grades at all levels, um, teachers at Cottonwood um, practice the Paideia method and um, use Socratic seminars to um, help us understand what students know about um, the content. The Paideia method is a way of training students to think um, more rigorously. And the Socratic seminar um, practice that we use at Cottonwood is when students have a common text and they are, um, they are talking in a class about that common text. And there's certain protocols that the um, Socratic seminar method uses, but um, it's a really nice way to, um, it's a really nice counterpoint to the traditional, um, just regular multiple choice test or just long tests that students get at the end of a unit. Um, having a Socratic seminar is an alternative way to demonstrate knowledge. Okay, we have our school tour next. And um, I understand from the previous couple of, um, presentations that it can be a little bit choppy. And so um, when I send out information um, with recordings of um, the sessions, I'll send out the link to the um, YouTube for the school tour, which will be a little bit clearer. Oops. I'm Jake. I'm Cameron. And this is our CCPS virtual tour. This is the student entrance, and this is where students are dropped off and picked up at the beginning and end of the day. Down this way is the middle school room, where the majority of middle school classrooms are located. In middle school and the underclasses of high school, we teach the Pi method, which really prepares students for college as well as just the Ivy program. 
Okay, walking down this hallway, we have a couple of our underclass science classrooms where underclassmen can take classes that will prep them for high school, such as intro to biology and intro to physics. On the right here is one of our middle school science classrooms, uh, which is quite large as it's suitable for many different labs. Moving on to this part of the school, this is our high school week. Here on the left is our senior lounge where students can spend their three periods or any other few times during the day and work on uh, homework or anything. Moving along over here, this is an example of one of our high school classrooms. Uh, this is a history classroom. Down this hall is a high school science room. These classrooms are a bit larger and equipped for more lab work. Coming down this hallway, we have a number of our language classrooms. Students all take English and can also take a foreign language, which is Spanish or French. This is the typical size of one of our high school English classes because uh, one of the high school English classes usually has about 15 students, and this is suitable for a more focus-based type of learning environment. Down this hallway is the fine arts uh, area of the school. There are three different fine arts that are offered here at Cottonwood from grades 6 to 12. Music, theater, and art. When a student reaches IB, they have a selection between art and theater as IB courses. Finally, coming to the end of the hall is where our, our art is. This is one of our computer labs. We, this is where students can have access to the internet and they can use if they need to do research or homework. And we also offer technology coding and technology. Here's our gym for the entire school where students uh, participate in physical education. This is our cafeteria area. Connected to it is this room in here, which has various microwaves and fridges where students can store and heat up their lunch. This is where students can pick up their lunches that they pre ordered in the beginning of the book, and they, they order lunch from trays, restaurants, and they do the following. Power Basketball offers many athletic programs such as basketball, bowling, co ed, soccer, cross country, volleyball, golf, swimming, track and field. And we also offer science yeah. Located up here in the front of the school, in the front office, is the multiple athletic athletes of all of the teams that come. Now we're walking through the main hallway of our school, which connects to the high school and middle school wings. Here at Cottonwood, we have a dress code, which includes our cotton clothes, which we wear on Mondays through Thursdays, which come in a variety of colors and can be purchased online by parents. On Fridays, however, Students are allowed to wear any spirit shirts that they have, as well as college underwear. Uh, I wear is acceptable as long as it adheres to a CCPS guideline. So it must have, it must be CCPS underwear. This would be considered CCPS underwear since it has a common possible symbol. And uh, you can also wear zip up jackets inside the school. Outside the school, you can wear whatever types of things you wear. Oh, you can wear any types of pants that you want, uh, as long as uh, they can be leggings, they just can't have any mesh or see-through areas, and uh, they must not have any rips or holes if they're jeans. Um, moving along, at Common Classical, we have what we call the IV program or the IVTP program, which is where you can either choose to go diploma or non-diploma. And uh, high school students can choose the classes that they're likely to and test in. And the first two years, so your freshman and sophomore year, you're just finishing up your high school credits, getting ready for the whole IV program. And the last two years, your junior and senior year, is when you really decide whether you want to go to diploma or non diploma, and you take your IV classes depending on which classes you would like to test in. Conwood is a tuition free charter school, meaning that admission is based on the lottery system. And if the student doesn't initially get in on with the lottery system, they may be placed on a wait list, meaning that any of the other students that were admitted 
don't show up the first few weeks of school or offer up their spot, any students on the waitlist may take that spot. And then any siblings of students who are admitted have uh, an automatically reserved spot at the school. Conway is an academically rigorous school and students and parents should acknowledge this when entering the lottery system and getting into this school. Uh, in middle school, their uh, students are taught at a faster and more advanced speed, which will prepare them for high school and the IB program where high schoolers are taught at a college level. So I know that's not really the same as getting an actual school tour, um, but until we can have students um, be uh, in the whole building, that'll that'll have to suffice. Um, again, I'll send that YouTube link in case you had um, kind of a choppy video experience. Um, okay, so let's talk about activities and athletics. So we have a variety of activities at Cottonwood. Um, and I know that there's some more informal clubs that are run at the school. Um, for the last few years, I've had um, a costuming club called Cosplay. And, um, and the students would create costumes and wigs and they would do makeup um, because that was their interest. And it was a fun club and creative. And um, we met once a week and I got to enjoy learning about makeup. Um, and I, I, I definitely found that teenage girls knew a lot more about makeup than I did, so that was fun. Um, we have athletics, which are presently to a certain extent on hold because of, um, because of the COVID-19 um, rules um, about having students in that type of close contact. Um, but as, as things start to improve, our athletic director will um, let students know what the protocols are for practices and for um, games. So even though we're online, um, teachers will still be required to take attendance. Um, and so every, every period, teachers will be taking role. Um, if a student is absent, even in the remote environment, um, you still need to call the front office um, by 10 o'clock for the absence to be excused. And if students are absent, they need to get their makeup work from their teacher. So one of the big differences at Cottonwood is that the grades, um, if you'll notice, we have A's and B's and C's. We do not have D's at Cottonwood. So it goes from a C minus to an F. And the reason for that is that a grade of a D doesn't really demonstrate a lot of mastery of the content. Um, and because it's an academically rigorous school, we need students to be able to um, have good understanding before they go on to the next course. So you'll just notice that a 70 is the lowest grade that we have at Cottonwood that's still considered a passing grade. Um, we are using our Cottonwood email for mass communication. You'll notice that you get messages from me or from Mr. Binner um, through email. And when there's some kind of um, situation where we need to give a lot of information, we'll definitely be using email. Um, in order to access Schoology, students need to be signed into their CCPS email. And I know there's been fewer and fewer people having trouble with it, which is great. It seems like students are able to get into their email and able to get into Schoology. Um, if there is any kind of communication between teachers and parents, it needs to be through email. Um, if you use Schoology's messaging system, it doesn't notify um, teachers when we get a message. And so you might not see it until the next time you log into Schoology. Um, and so it's better to use email. If there is a whole class message that's sent, it will be using Schoology. So if, for example, if you're telling students um, or if we are telling students, you have a test tomorrow um, in the class or you have a quiz tomorrow, just a reminder, that might be sent using the Schoology tool because that allows a quick message to the whole class.
Okay, I want to go over the remote learning schedule just to make sure that everybody understands how it works. So every day, same time as we've been meeting this week, you have advisory from 8.30 to 9, so a half hour of advisory. Um, and then at 9 to 9.15, there's a 15 minute break. So that's the time to run to the bathroom, to get a drink, to get a snack. Um, then from 9.15, to 10.30 is our first block. So we have 75 minute blocks. Um, and just like in a regular class, you need to be present and involved. So your camera needs to be on, um, your teacher will be taking attendance, there will be activities where you might need to respond in some way. Um, if you need to use the bathroom, you're gonna wanna probably put in the chat, um, be right back in three minutes or something like that. Um, you don't want to just walk away from the class. And then after that first block, or on Tuesdays, uh, the fourth block, you have a 15-minute break. And then you have your second block, or your fifth block, from um, 10.45 until noon. And that's another 75-minute class. You have lunch from 12 to 12.45, which is nice. It's a little bit longer than what we have at school. Um, from 12.45 to 2 o'clock, you have your third block of the day, or on Tuesdays, your sixth block. Um, also another 75-minute class. And then there's a 15-minute break from 2 to 2.15. 2 so on Mondays, teachers have office hours. Um, some teachers have office hours. Um, and if you have questions that you want to clarify with your teachers, that's really the time to go in and talk to them. Um, we have a seventh block on Tuesdays and Thursdays. On Wednesdays um, at 2.15, there's um, a teacher meeting, the staff professional development time. And so students get out a little bit early on that day. Um, on Fridays, you'll notice that there's advisory first thing in the morning, and then there's a break, and then there's community time. So there might be a class meeting or something where a bigger group is meeting. Um, another break, and then there's a study skill support. So if you need any type of um, support in your classes with organization, or you just feel like you could use a little extra help, that would be the time to do it. There's additional office hours, um, office hour C. There's a lunch break again from 12 to 12.45, and then more office hours after lunch. And then students are dismissed early, and there's another um, staff professional development time. Friday, you don't have regular classes scheduled, so you really only need to be on during the advisory, and then any um, type of scheduled times that you're um, supposed to go in and talk to um, teachers for the rest of the day. Otherwise, you have time to do homework or to do group work um, with kids in your class. Okay, so this is a high school session, and so we're going to talk in a little bit more detail about some of the um, high school um, qualifications at Cottonwood. So if you are a um, new ninth grader, you're going to need to... Um, probably do a credit check with Ms. Geertz. Um, and the reason for that is because our eighth graders at Cottonwood take several high school um, level classes. And so um, it, it's very likely that she'll, Ms. Geertz will need to put some of those um, classes into your schedule so you can make up those classes or you'll end up taking um, BYU credit recovery to um, make up those credits. Um, and so, Ms. Geertz is the one that would really be very knowledgeable and helpful with figuring out what classes you need to make up. We want to make sure that students um, in eighth grade and up in high school um, are organized. So if you have if you have come to this school, uh, you probably picked up an agenda. And if you're coming tomorrow to um, pick up any materials, you'll get a school agenda. Um, otherwise, if you don't need to pick up anything else, you can wait until we come back to school to get the agenda. But if you have the agenda or you have another just notebook to use, you want to write down what your assignments are in there so you can keep yourself organized. Um, you need to assume that you will have homework every night 
set it, set aside at least a couple of hours a night to do homework. So during remote learning, it's likely that you might have a little bit less homework because you're in front of the computer all day and that can be really an exhausting um, experience for students. Um, but you still need to assume that you're gonna have homework um, that you need to work on on a nightly basis. And if you have questions about anything, make sure that you get your questions answered. Um, it's harder to tell in this situation who has questions. And so you have to voice your questions either through the chat, you need to ask your teacher, your advisor is going to be very knowledgeable and be able to answer a lot of school questions for you. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about the IB program. And I'm giving you some general information about the IB program. Just remember that the um, Zoom meeting tonight with the parent, um, the PAC, the parent Q&A, um, our IB coordinator will be there and she can answer more specific questions. So just like we talked about earlier, the IB program is a very rigorous program. Um, but part of what makes it rigorous is that students are expected to demonstrate their knowledge in a variety of ways. Um, there's projects, there's presentations, there's testing. And so really the whole brain is being used in the IB experience. So at the, at the core of the IB diploma program, there's those approaches to teaching and learning. What is good teaching? What is good um, learning in this situation? Because the information is, um, is given at such a fast pace, teachers really need to use good methods to make sure that students are understanding and students need to um, be practicing the best learning they can so that they understand the content. The um, IB program has, um, besides classes, there's other aspects to the program that are required for graduation. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. There's the theory of knowledge um, class, which is a philosophy class. There's the extended essay that all seniors have to turn in in the fall. And then there's the um, CAS component, the creativity, activity, and service part of the program. Um, students take classes in language um, acquisition. So your French or your Spanish classes. Um, there's your English class, um, your literature class. There's the social studies class, your mathematics class, um, your chosen arts class, and then your chosen science class. So at Cottonwood, students take the theory of knowledge class um, as part of their 11th and 12th grade program. It's um, in addition, if you're taking philosophy already, it's in addition to that philosophy class and you're answering some big questions um, and you're doing it with um, an eye to the philosophy of those big questions. The um, CAS project um, is something that students are doing to a certain extent outside of school. There's the creativity component. So um, for example, some students, um, like my students in the cosplay club, are getting uh, cast credit for that type of creative work. And there's um, the service component because students are going to hospitals in their, um, in their creative outfits that they put together. And they are, um, they're working with, with kids that are sick in the hospital. Um, that's probably not gonna happen this year just because of our pandemic situation. But I know that there's lots of ways to be, a, that to be creative online. Um, and there's these types of meetings that students can um, participate in that um, can still fulfill that service um, portion of the CAS project. And then there's the extended essay. So um, if you are interested in a certain subject area, you'll be paired with a teacher that is also interested in that area and they will um, guide you in your extended essay. The extended essay is, um, is a, a long essay um, and it depends on the, on the subject that you choose, but it might be a research project, project or it could be an inquiry paper. Um, it, it depends on what your interest is. So if you um, 
if you are preparing for the IB program, there are some ways that you can get yourself ready. And one of those ways is to um, get to know more about the IB program so it doesn't feel uncomfortable to you because not a lot of people know about the IB program. Oh, pardon me. Sorry about that. Um, you're gonna wanna know about the subjects that um, are offered in the IB program. Um, where it says keep up the English. So the English um, class is a very rigorous class, but keeping up the English also refers to, so remember this is a world program. This is a program that's used throughout the world. And so for a lot of students around the world, um, their literature class is in a second language. And so if it's in a second language for you, that's just something that you wanna acknowledge. Um, as, as something that might take a little bit more work on your part. And then you wanna keep up with your, your language that you've chosen, whether it's French or Spanish. Um, as part of the program, you want to explore some extracurricular activities. Um, know your study strengths. That's, a really, that's really good advice in general. Um, is it helpful to you to take notes? Is it helpful for you to um, listen to recordings? Is it helpful for you to stand while you're learning? And it's really, you have more flexibility in this situation because you're at home. Um, is it helpful for you to study in the morning? Um, is it helpful for you to um, read something, um, take notes, and then go back and reuse those notes um, and refer back to them? So think about the best way that you can study. You wanna practice being organized um, and you want to ignore the rumors about IB being too hard. IB is not too hard. You can do IB. We've had hundreds of students graduate from our school that have been able to do the IB program and you can do it too. Okay, some remote learning expectations. So every day you need to check Schoology um, for any kind of assignments that are put um, up by your teacher or any messages to the class. Um, you're gonna wanna check your CCPS email daily because you will get communication from um, other students and people within the school that way. If you have a tech issue, ask your teacher about it first. And if it's persistent, then you wanna contact our tech coordinator, uh, Mr. Torres. Make sure that your camera is on during class. It's a way that we can guarantee that our students are present. You wanna wear your CCPS polo during class. Whether you're online or at the school, you still need to wear your CCPS polo. If you um, are getting ready for class in those um, 15 minute breaks, make sure you grab whatever materials you need for the class because you don't wanna get up during class um, to get something from an other area of your house. You wanna have everything ready to go. When other people are speaking, you wanna have your microphone off so you don't have um, that feedback. And any kind of distraction, um, you wanna keep it to a minimum. So if somebody's watching TV in another room, close the door so you're not hearing it. If your dog distracts you, you wanna have the dog out of the room. So keep those distractions to a minimum so you can focus. And then any kind of class activity that your class is doing, you wanna make sure that you're participating. I know it can feel a little bit awkward at first in this type of situation, but you'll get comfortable with it really quickly and you'll be able to participate in your class activities. During advisory, you're gonna check in with your advisor. So students are gonna check in with their advisor, um, both from the attendance standpoint, as well as the social emotional um, standpoint. So we're just gonna get a, a feel for, you know, are you doing okay? Are you feeling, are you feeling okay? Um, do you need anything? Um, we're gonna be practicing mindfulness skills and um, our counselor has been working on um, lessons and videos for advisories to um, to watch together and to um, and to learn about together and mindfulness is really about um, learning about your own feelings and how to best cope with the situation especially the situation that we're 
we're currently in, which can be very stressful for a lot of, a lot of people. Um, your advisory is split into two parts. Um, so Monday and Wednesday, you have a group uh, in the advisory, and then Tuesday and Thursday is a different group. And then Friday, everybody in the advisory will be in the same um, advisory time. But in those smaller groups, um, our idea was that you might have a chance to get to know some of those students a little bit more um, when you have 10 to 12 students instead of 24 students. Parents, your child's advisor is the first, um, the first person that you should contact if you have school questions. Unless you know that it needs to very specifically go to um, somebody else in the school. If you have a question, go to your child's advisor. They'll be able to help you or at least direct you to the correct person to talk to. Okay, and just some of the governing body, bodies that help our school to um, run. So we are a charter school, we're a public charter school. And so instead of a board of education, we have a governing council. Our president is Jill Van Nortwick. They have um, meetings um, once a month. And at this point, the meetings are online. So they're really easy to get to if you like to stop in and um, check out a meeting. We have meeting notes that are also available on the CCPS website. Um, and so if you ever wanna check out those notes, um, I know that those are available there. Because um, we're a public school, we cannot take donations directly. And so donations are funneled through the CCPS Foundation, uh, which is a 501c3. The president of the foundation is Antoinette Pacheco. Um, like almost every school in the United States, we have a parent-teacher organization. They are incredibly helpful to our teachers and our students. Um, they provide um, lots of activities that are fun for our students. They're helpful to our students. Um, in fact, tomorrow from three to five, there's for returning families, there's a polo shirt exchange. So um, give a polo, get a new polo in a bigger size. Um, and they have activities that are just really fun for students. Um, during a normal year, they do the fall fair um, and they do the winter stroll, which is a make-a-wish activity. Um, and they do nice things for the teachers, like provide lunch um, every few months. And it's just a, it's a treat for everybody. The activities they do are just really a, a nice way for the community to get together. We have a parent advisory council, which um, provides us, provides the school with information um, that is a little bit um, more um, policy based. Um, and they also give us um, information based on surveys and just feedback that they collect um, about how um, families um, can best be served by Cottonwood Classical. They also do services like providing um, parents with information like they're going to do today at six um, with the parent Q&A. This is the code for today's parent Q&A. Um, and I'm gonna just put that into the chat box. And I believe that, I'm trying to remember when the last time I sent that out. I believe it was last week, um, or maybe it was Monday, where I sent those updated codes to everybody. So it's also in your email, but that's the code for the six o'clock meeting today. And today's um, parent Q&A um, will also have our IB coordinator, Megan Lowe, and um, Mr. Binner is gonna be at that um, meeting as well if you have questions for him. Okay, so now, I have a few questions um, in the chat box that we have time to answer. Um, okay, so Ben, Tim is asking, you don't use the IB one through seven or one through eight grading scale. Um, so Ben, yes, the IB classes are gonna use that scoring method um, in, in your classes, um, but they'll be translated into regular grades um, for your transcript. Um, Jaden Shannon is asking, when will um, we be able to choose a science and art classes? So, um, so Jaden, if um, 
If you're a ninth or a 10th grader, 10th grade at the end of 10th grade, um, you'll get information about those classes and, um, and then you'll be um, put into those classes for 11th grade. If you're coming in as an 11th or 12th grader, a grader you'll need to um, work with um, Ms. Lowe or IB coordinator and our registrar um, to make sure that your schedule um, works for you in the IB program. And then um, Alexi is asking, is there still a need to come in tomorrow for a scheduled appointment from what I'm gathering? The only reason we would come in at our scheduled time is to pick up the CCPS agenda. Yeah, so if you have a high school um, student, um, you only have the agenda that you're picking up unless um, you have been contacted by any IB teachers um, that are requiring uh, materials to be picked up. And they would have, they would have emailed um, the student and told them that they had materials to pick up. Um, Alexi, the only, um, the only thing that your student might need to pick up if they're, um, if they're taking Algebra 1, there is an Algebra 1 packet um, that um, the Algebra 1 teacher printed up for, for students. So that's the only thing that might need to be picked up in addition to the agenda. Um, are there any other questions? Oh, no, I see some more questions. Okay, so um, JE is asking, my daughter's new to the school as a ninth grader. If she already has a schedule, should I check with Ms. Geertz about any makeup classes? Yes. Yeah, you'll need to. Um, so if you have any kind of makeup classes, um, whether you take them at the school or use um, our BYU credit recovery um, system, you'll do that through Mrs. Geertz. Okay, and then Jacob V. Hill is asking, I have a question about CCPS email. How do I set up a CCPS email? Okay, so um, Jacob, if you will go to, so there's a, there's a few ways. The email should have been set up for you already, and then now you just need to get into it. So if you go to the CCPS website, so cottonwoodclassical.org, and you go to the um, links, forms, and documents. There's a, there's a place called links, forms, and documents. There are email directions there for getting into your email. So I'm just gonna put that into the um, chat box. So Cottonwood Classical org, and then links, forms, and documents for the email instructions. Okay, so um, I have I have a couple questions about um, ninth graders. So I'm just gonna go to um, something that I presented yesterday that might be helpful to you. So um, these are the classes that the eighth graders um, at Cotton would take. So they take um, two semesters of Algebra one, two semesters of Biology, two semesters of um, Spanish one, New Mexico History, and Health. And so um, there are, as you can see, there are quite a few classes to to um, to make up to get to be um, with your cohort. And so some of those you'll take as part of uh, the regular schedule. And then some of them are easier to take online with BYU. So like the health is easier to take online and the New Mexico history is probably easier to take online instead of spending time at school doing that class. Um, but the, um, the other three classes, those might be in, in the schedule for the ninth grade student. And that's something that um, you can work with um, Ms. Geertz on um, figuring out. And all of the classes, um, they can, especially the New Mexico history and the health, those can be taken sometimes a little bit later in the high school career because they don't necessarily affect um, the classes that the students are taking. Okay, let me see if there are any other questions. All right, so I don't see any other questions. So I'm gonna jump back to that link for the parent Q&A. All right, I want to um, thank everybody for attending today. 
And um, you all have been so patient this week as we go through this process of trying to get everybody ready for um, remote learning. If you, um, if you need anything, please feel free to contact me. I'm Carissa Petrie. I'm sure you have lots of emails from me um, with my email address. Um, and I would be happy to help you or to um, direct you to the correct person. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end this call. And you have about um, 10 minutes before the parent Q&A starts. All right, guys, have a great evening.